In this video, we will talk about how we can test whether a function is continuous at a point. So I want to begin by defining what it means for a function f to be continuous at x equals a, where a is some number. And that's the case if the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. So conceptually what this is saying when we say that these two things are the same is, if I draw a rough graph, and I say this is a, the limit as x approaches a, that's talking about I need as it happens from the left, and as it happens to the right, that limit needs to be equal to the value of the function at a, equal to the y value. So that limit has to meet where the actual point is at x equals a. Okay. Equivalently, for this to be the case, I can break it down in terms of one-sided limits. I would need the limit as x approaches a from the left of my function to be equal to the limit as x approaches a from the right of our function. Those being equal would guarantee that this limit exists. And I need both of these to be equal to f of a, equal to the y value of my function when I plug in x equals a. Okay, so. Let's look at this based off of the graph below. So in this graph below, I want to look at the x values at negative 5, at 2, and at 4. And at x equals negative 5, the limit as x approaches a, so from the left and from the right, that limit exists. And it equals f of a, the y value of the function at this point. So this is continuous. I'll just abbreviate con continuous at x equals negative 5. At x equals 2, the limit does exist from the left and the right. The y values approach the same thing, but they don't equal f of 2. In fact, f of 2 is undefined because there's no point on the graph where x equals 2. So the word for not continuous is discontinuous. This function is discontinuous at x equals 2. And then what about at 4? At 4, the limit from the left and the limit from the right are definitely different. And because of that, this limit overall doesn't even exist. And if it doesn't exist, it can't be equal to the y value of our function at that point. So it's also going to be discontinuous at 4. So at 4, what's going on here? Our function is discontinuous. And this should match up with our conceptual understanding of what continuous means, that I should be able to draw my function, its graph, through that point without lifting up my pencil. Okay, so if I did that at negative five, I would be able to draw it, go past it without lifting up my pencil. At two, if I start to draw it, I have to lift up my pencil because I can't draw the hole and then pick it up over here, so that would be discontinuous. And then at four, I go here and then I have to sort of jump down to this other one. And that's also discontinuous conceptually. All right, let's look at an example where we apply this definition of continuity. Okay, so I have this piecewise function, which equals 1 over x if x is less than negative 1. Absolute value of x if negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 4. And it equals 2 root x if x is greater than or equal to 4. The problem asks, is f continuous at x equals negative 1 in a, x equals 4, and then x equals 0? So I need to test those three points to see is it continuous there. And then finally, we'll graph this piecewise function. All right, so let's do part A. To see if it's continuous, I need to check if the limit from the left, so as x approaches negative 1 from the left, equals the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right, equals, uh, whoops, not a limit here, equals f of negative 1, what I get when I plug in this x value. OK, so just so I can visualize this a little bit better, I'm going to draw a number line. And the places where this piecewise function switches from one piece to another piece that happens at negative 1 and at 4, I'm going to put those on the number line. So to the left of negative 1, my function is 1 over x. In between negative 1 and 4, it's absolute value of x. And then when it's greater than 4, my function is 2 root x. So this number line is just going to help me visualize what's going on when we take these limits. All right, so first, let's do the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of our function. I'm sorry, I think we should say negative 1 from the left. 
negative 1 from the left. So we have the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left. If we're approaching negative 1 from the left, we are on this side of negative 1, getting closer and closer to it. But over here, our function is 1 over x. So I'll write 1 over x. And now I can just plug in. So I'm going to plug in the number negative 1. That's what x is approaching. And that just gives me negative 1. All right, let's do the limit from the, the right now. Oops. And I realized I forgot to put a plus sign here. I just put another negative. All right, so I've copied that number line again above here. So let's do the limit as we approach negative 1 from the right side. So as we approach negative 1 from the right side, we need to be getting super, super close to negative 1 and on the right side of it. So we are going to be over here, getting really, really close to it. So because of that, we're going to be working with the absolute value of x piece. Notice that we're not allowed to be over here, even though this is to the right of negative 1, it's way too far away. we got to be super, super close to negative 1, somewhere over here. So we're going to use the absolute value of x piece. And now we can plug in negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1, that is positive 1. So remember, the limit as I approached it from the left was negative 1. And now the limit as we approach it from the right is positive 1. I don't even need to figure out the third thing, f of negative 1, because these two are already different. Based off of this alone, I can say my function is discontinuous. It is discontinuous at this x value, at x equals negative 1. The limit doesn't even exist. From the left and from the right, those limits are different. Let's do part B. Remember, part B was asking me to test it at x equals 4. So I want to give you two minutes to try this on your own first. 4, 3, 2, 1. Pause the video for two minutes to see if you can test whether this is continuous at 4. Alrighty, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it for two minutes to try this. So we are going to have to do the limit as x approaches 4 from the left and from the right. So let's set it up from the left, and then a little bit below, I'll do it from the right. OK, and as I approach 4 from the left, limit as x approaches 4 from the left, that is going to be getting super, super close to 4, but on the left side, that is this part of the graph, which is my absolute value function. And now i got to plug the number in, so I get absolute value of 4, which is 4. And now let's do the limit as you approach 4 from the right. Limit as x approaches 4 from the right. And as I approach 4 from the right, we are going over here, super, super close to 4, but on the right side, that's going to use 2 root x as our function. So let's plug in to get 2 times root 4. That's 2 times 2, which is 4. So, so far, so good. These two are the same. OK, so that means I need to check the third condition. Do these equal f of 4 when I actually plug 4 into my function? So looking back at my piecewise function, to plug 4 in, I'm going to be using the bottom piece. That's where x actually equals 4. So f of 4, we're going to plug into 2 root x. So 2 root 4, but we already did that right above. That just equals 4. So here, our function f, so I'm putting an implication error, our function f is continuous, is continuous at x equals 4 because these three quantities are all the same. The limit exists, the limit is 4, and that limit equals the y value of the function when x equals 4. All right, let's look at part c. Part c was asking me to test it at x equals 0. So let's look back to our piecewise function. In fact, let's just look at this number line. So 0 is somewhere, is somewhere here somewhere between negative 1 and 4. So as I approach 0 from the left or from the right, it's the same function that we're going to work with, just absolute value of x. So I don't need to do the left hand and right hand limits individually. I could just do the two-sided or the overall limit directly. So let's do it that way to be a little bit more efficient. Let's just do the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x straight up. And I can do that again because it's the same function, absolute value of x, from both sides as I get super, super close to 0. OK, so we get the limit as x approaches 0 of absolute value of x. Now let's plug in absolute value of 0, which is 0. 
I got a test now, is that the same thing as if I plug zero into my function? And when I plug zero into my function, into my piecewise function, that's the middle piece. So I'm still gonna be plugging into the absolute value. So we get absolute value of zero, which is zero. So here as well, this implies f is continuous. f is continuous at x equals zero because the limit as x approaches zero of my function equals the y value of our function at x equals zero. Finally, the last part, d, was asking us to graph this function. So this is some algebra review, how we graph piecewise functions. I'm going to begin by recalling, well, what do each of these pieces look like? y equals 1 over x, y equals absolute value of x, and then y equals 2 root x. So let's draw some axes, some axes here, and some axes here. 1 over x is a hyperbola. There's one piece over here, and there's one piece over here. Absolute value of x is a v-shape that has that vertex, that bottom point at the origin. And then two root x is like the square root, is like the square root x graph, but the two just stretches it vertically by a factor of two. So it's still gonna have this, this shape that the square root graph has. It's just stretched vertically a little bit. Okay, and now I'm gonna color in uh, which parts of each of these graphs I'm gonna look at when I combine them into a piecewise function. So for one over x, it's just the part where x is less than negative one. So when x is negative one, that's here. I gotta put an open circle there because x is not gonna be allowed to be equal to negative one. Uh, if I were to plug in negative one, the y value is negative one. And I'm keeping this part of the graph. That is where x is less than negative one. For the absolute value, of gra uh, value graph, I start at x is negative one. And I do include that. So I put an open circle because of this equal sign. If I plug negative one in, my y value is one. And then the other endpoint is four. If I were to plug four into this, the y value I'd get is four. But I put an open circle here because I don't have an equal sign. X is not allowed to be equal to four. So let's shade in this part of the graph. Let's do it in red. Maybe even for the other one, let's do it in red so it stands out more. Okay, and then two root x, I'm gonna start that off by plugging in four. And it is allowed to be equal to four, so I put a closed circle there. And if I plug four into this, the y value will be four. And let's shade in the values where x is greater than or equal to four. That'll be all of these. Okay, so the parts in red that we've drawn, those are the parts of the graphs that we're gonna put together in our piecewise function, y equals f of x. Let's draw this, I'll have a y-axis, I'll have an x-axis. Okay, so now let's start to draw this. All right, so I'm gonna draw negative one here. And first I gotta draw this uh, hyperbola part, which looks like, and then there's a hole. The coordinates of the hole are negative one comma negative one. And then I pick it up as this absolute value part. I pick it up at negative one comma one. It goes down to the bottom of the V and then it goes up like this until I have a hole there. That's when X is four and the Y value is also four there. Okay. And then finally we got this square root part, but the square root part will start off. It'll start off with a closed circle at four comma four. So that is gonna fill in this open circle. It's gonna fill it in and then I'll continue onwards like this in that square root shape. So if I look at my graph and I compare it to where we said this was continuous and discontinuous, notice that at, uh, let's go up a bit, at negative one, we said the function was discontinuous. And that matches what we're seeing in the graph here. It's discontinuous at negative one. It is definitely discontinuous there. And then at zero, we said it was continuous, and this looks continuous. And then at four, at four, we said it was continuous, and this does look continuous there as well. In terms of our goals for this section, we finished our first goal to define what it means for a function to be continuous at a point and test whether functions are continuous at points, at indicated points 